Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Absolute Comics! My name is Benny, that is Sal, and today we're going to be going through a very small list of topics. Uh, so have you read any comics? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right, this is a comic book show, yeah. and comic books can come out, well, technically, but not for long. Yeah, they're we fixing record these shows on more... Tuesdays, yeah, it's going to be it's gonna be a waste, man. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna have to start recording these on fridays i hope yeah. you don't have plans so if you, yeah uh yeah thankfully i'm very uh not busy friday nights but uh no it's <laughs> folks uh dc is moving all their releases from tuesdays to wednesdays uh back when uh re returning to a form when uh, dc's used to be uh on the same day as everybody else so, so okay what do we think the reasoning behind that is I honestly, do you, I, do you think sales took a hit and they're blaming the move? I don't think it's necessarily a financial because, decision. I was like, I, because if you go in Wednesday and you're yeah. getting your books, if they're in a pull pile, you already got them. You don't even know what day it came out. And two, yeah. the DC are already on the shelf. So well, that's, uh, in most of my comic book stores, DC books are not on the shelves on Tuesday. They are on the shelves on Wednesday. Most comic book retailers that I have experienced have essentially said, yeah, no to the DC Tuesday thing. Um, yeah. A couple of like more vigilant ones, maybe ones that are better staffed or have a ro more robust uh, staffing situation can afford to get their books out on Tuesday. Right. But it, it's a bear to get all those books on the shelf. First of all, the books usually arrive Monday or Tuesday. So you spend all of Tuesday. A lot of comic shops are actually closed either Monday or Tuesday so they can put all their books on the effing shelves and get them into the inventory, yeah. digital inventory. In this case, it's like, I'm not going to do that twice. I'm going to do it all in one day. So like in, in my case, one of my comic shops used to put all their DC books into a long box that I assume all their books went into, like all their books had long boxes in alphabetical order. And in this case, they went, all the DC books go in that long box, put it behind the counter. So on Tuesday, if anybody knows a book came out today, they yeah. can ask for it. But otherwise, it'll be on the shelf tomorrow, which is Wednesday. Well, I also think part of the problem is that DC really didn't, on the general public, make them aware. Hell no. No, it was, they, they did a little bit of a rollout when they first did it, but they didn't keep reminding people. And I think the reason for that is because boots on the ground, the people who ran DC Comics, and I don't mean like the people who are technically in charge of DC Comics. I mean like the people who actually make DC Comics run didn't believe in it at all. I right. think like part of the reason why we're getting a DC Marvel omnibus crossover or two is also tangentially related to the fact that comic books are coming out on wednesday from dc again i think there's like some kind of a like quiet subtle shift within the like managerial department of dc that is making things more in line with the way they should be as opposed to the way that they like operate because the, the decision to switch distributors during the pandemic i understand it was like a shrewd business decision that they felt was necessary but it was also a decision that was made by people who did not really understand the industry very well. No, because they did two distributors. They did two distributors, one of which was a direct competitor to the national market, right? Because one of them was run by Midtown Comics, which is a national distributor slash comic book store that is, like, if you want a new comic book, you go to your local comic book store to get it, that puts money in the pocket of your, comic, of your local comic book store. Right. Or you could just set up a pre-order system with Midtown Comics and around Tuesday or Wednesday, your book will arrive in the mail. I mean, I understand that's, you know, that sounds enticing, but it doesn't help any of your local comic shops. I mean, so, so what I did a comic book store. Because it, yeah. it was easier to have them sent to me from Midtown than it was to actually, like, function as... I mean, every year I'd move. I don't want... I gotta go find that's a so new funny, comic because I did the exact same thing when I went to college. I also yeah. set up a, a, a system with Midtown Comics. Yeah. Because I was like, well... And, and genuinely, it wasn't because I was like interested in their effort it was more like i didn't know anyone else that, that's what I, that's how i did it because i would online I'm like well, how do i get these sent to me and i gotta move a lot so i just want to be able to change an address and that's the end of it yeah yeah and not so have to go make new friends it. get to know the shop again oh, God, what a what a nightmare I mean, especially if you're just gonna move after six months or eight year, or, or a year yeah. or two anyway but uh so yeah i i think that you know, DC made that decision in haste, but it was also made by people who didn't really know the industry very well. And when I say that, I don't necessarily mean that they didn't know their business. I mean that they didn't know the kind of push or degree or response they were going to get from the retail market and from the audience who didn't really understand it anyway. So now we're kind of just like returning to form. It's like things are finally settling back into where they should be. Um, but that doesn't mean everything's sunshine and rainbows. No, I'm just saying, you know, maybe some things are getting back to the way they ought to be. 
And one of those things is DC books coming out on Wednesdays. I mean, yeah. I miss those days. I do. Because back, back when I was, you know, where the new comic story and wasn't running four or five channels, wasn't <laughs> humbly bragging about all the shit I'm doing. Naturally. Uh, <laughs> yeah, when it was just Benny hanging out and right. occasionally making a comic book video or two and streaming video games. And that's what I was doing. I would every Tuesday drive to GameStop <laughs> because GameStop would have the two, the games only came out on Tuesday. There was no right. Thursday or Friday releases. There was no Tuesday. And then you had the occasional Friday. So I'd go to GameStop, see what just came out. And then I would go to the comic store on Wednesday, and that was where I hung out, like get my social yeah. interaction at those two places. So, and I kind of miss those days. Like, I don't have anywhere to go anymore. It's true. I mean, even my local, my most local comic book store moved a good 20 minutes further away. And I just tried to get to there recently uh, because they had a dollar bin sale and just dealing with parking. I spent, I spent 25 minutes getting to the store. And then I spent another 15 minutes just trying to find an effing parking space. And for me, that's like, I may never come back to this comic book store ever again. Yeah. If you're going to add an extra 10, 15 minutes just for looking for, just driving around the comic book store, eat me. That's never going to happen. I'll just drive. For me, it was similar. uh, When I moved away from my last house to this house, Yeah. my comic book store, I had a 20 minutes of the drive to get there due to traffic. And I kind of just stopped going. It wasn't yeah, intentional. I it's just, easy to do. It's easy to just fall into those habits. Yeah. Well, and then people wonder what's the problem with comic book stores. Like, there's a number of issues. One of which is how close are you to everybody you're trying to sell to? You know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Uh, long story short, we're probably not going to be able to talk about what came out the day that the DC books drop. In uh, I think it's April when it's happening. But uh, but for now, I also didn't read any books because you oh, know, we'll just be a week behind again, like we used to be. Yeah, which is fine. People I'll are... stop showing up, being like, "Did you read?" And you're like, "No." And I'm like, "Let me spoil." <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. It's like, "Oh my god, the latest Batman." Yeah, that that does happen. <laughs> <laughs> and we can still do that for at least another month. <laughs> okay, cool. So I can spoil Batman for you for the next two times because that's the yes. next two we're gonna get. Awesome. That's right. That's right. Uh, okay, cool. Can we do a special episode tomorrow so I can spoil Ultimate Spider Man? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Ultimate Spider Man does not come out this week. No, I got dude. I got messed up by that. So I'm writing the schedule for everyone because we would have we would have had Godzilla out today. Totally. And I guess I looked at the wrong week. So I'm like, nothing comes out on DC. So we'll just do Ultimate Spider Man this week. No worry about it. And then I'm getting all these pings like, where's Godzilla? Yeah. Uh, what do you mean, where's Godzilla? Godzilla is not out. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh no exactly oh no oh no it was out yeah so we're uh, we're doing a rush job on that tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> smart uh, all right so let's go through our topics then uh yes. apologize to anybody who did not watch the twitch live show just so you know we do film these live at twitch.tv slash comic storian every tuesday at 5 p.m eastern uh the pre-show went way way longer than expected <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's true uh um, yeah Marvel confirms that Nova MCU project is an early development and it seems like it's going to focus on Richard Ryder. That Good. rumor has existed. Oh my God. Yeah. For like 10 years that we're going to get a Richard Ryder Nova. At the very least, like they did introduce the Nova core. It's not like it came out of nowhere. It's not like people talking about how, how badly they want to see a blast star movie or uh, a sleepwalker picture. Like we're talking about, they did introduce the Nova core and Nova right, I, think the, I think the rumor started dead. <laughs> Probably. I mean, that makes sense. And Richard Ryder fans are a very vocal minority of the comic book group, uh, although they also don't buy the effing Richard Ryder books when they come out. So, you know, what can we say about that? But that's the reason why Sam did so much better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, f- financially, folks, not, yeah. not that he's... Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. I, uh, I am actually happy they're doing Richard Ryder at first, though, because I actually like the Sam Alexander stories, but <laughs> it only works by having Richard Ryder exist and be there ahead of time. Totally. Well, also, otherwise, you have... Sam is just a guy that gets a random power. But if we yeah. have Richard Ryder, it's like, no, that's Nova. Yeah. yeah. He's well, screwing it up. Like, that's what you want. Also, you have some place to go. You can yeah. do, I mean, you know, optimistically speaking, you could do two or three Nova movies, which I don't think is going to be a reality we live in. But then again, there's a friggin' Eternals movie. So, whatever. But... I could imagine them being like, we're going to make a couple of Nova movies. Maybe Nova shows up. Maybe he's a member of the Guardians. Maybe whatever. Maybe we do Annihilation someday. And then we can either kill him off or have him retire. Obviously, what we do in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, we don't kill characters. We make them get married and have children and go away. <laughs> so he'll do that. Bye, Thor! And, right? <laughs> Bye, Thor. Bye, everybody. Eventually, Doctor Strange will do that, too, because he loves Christine so much. <laughs> Never mind the fact that in Doctor Strange 1, he's like, what are we? we're not friends. We were barely lovers. And now it's, I love you in every universe. <laughs> so anyway, 
Uh, but anyway, you, when you retire Nova, it's like, oh, and now Sam's Nova. Now you got, well, now I think you got it's a wise idea. Sam movies. There's a few characters that the legacy t- ideas do work. I do yeah. think so, that you know they went a little crazy on the concept of a legacy idea. Like I love Jane Foster Thor. I don't think she should have ever been called Thor. Yeah. She, she should have been Valkyrie from the beginning because then the development of Valkyrie makes sense. It wouldn't have they, sold. Huh? It wouldn't have sold. They no, made no, I, Valkyrie books. They don't sell. You got to no, make no. him Thor. You got to make her Thor. I you do you do it for the shock value. Yeah. But I think she stayed Thor too long to be able to move her to something else. Well, that's I, true. I feel like she should have come out as Thor. That should have been the thing. And then in like volume two or three, it's like okay, she can't be Thor. Thor is literally over here now. Yeah. So Thor's back. She has to take a new title. And then yeah, was, you can yeah. transition her out. And she, because whenever they try to have a book about her now, it, it doesn't sell because no one knows that that is female Thor. That's who right. that is. Right. They don't know that that's Thor. They they don't know who Valkyrie is. Valkyrie itself yeah. is not a brand that has like legs, unfortunately. It just doesn't. And they they missed an pop. opportunity to give it legs, is what I'm saying. Well, also, like people who like Jane Foster Thor like Jane Foster Thor. What is Valkyrie? The outfit is wholly original, and I think it's actually okay, but again, it's not going to appeal to people who want female Thor. Like, I'm actually surprised when they brought her back as Valkyrie, they didn't just keep the female Thor outfit. I, I mean, one day Marvel will get the message, but it'll be 10 years past its expiration date, and she will wear a Thor costume. I mean, or you could just do two effing Thor books. One's called Mighty Thor, and that's Jane Foster, and the other one is Thor. Just called yeah. Thor, and that's starring Thor. And then and you just you make just... sure the covers have female Thor or regular Thor, and right? you know what you're buying. <laughs> these, are your, these are the decisions that you would have made 30 years ago and would have just kept the line going, but instead you got to overthink it and go, oh, I don't know. I mean, like on one hand, I could see a lot of people, like us included, who are like, make Jane Foster original character, make her Valkyrie. Uh, but again, you you know, editor me would be like, but Valkyrie won't sell. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, whatever we're trying well, I mean, to it, accomplish. It, 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 with... All you got to do is start it up as the mighty Thor, get yeah. a couple volumes in, rename her to Valkyrie in book. Yes. But the title of the book is The Mighty Thor Valkyrie. Right. Oh. But you're going to, you're going to, th- th- I promise you, the second you make that switch, you're going to lose sales. It's going to drop. It's going to drop. I don't necessarily have a solution, but I mean, the solution was the same as old, as Superior Spider-Man. People, oh, yeah. oh my God, people like him. Oh my God, it's selling exactly the same as Amazing Spider-Man. And listen, it replaced Amazing Spider-Man, so it was going to sell those numbers, but like, that's your flagship book. You got to try it. Yeah. So you make two books, Superior and Amazing, and then those are your only Spider-Man books you put out. And then you get two bites. Instead, with, with, with the, you know, no. Like the the return that they're doing right now for a superior is not working. Like, well, it's nothing. The plot's it's, okay. I don't mind the, the plot's plot. fun, but it's yeah. not Superior Spider Man. It's no. not a return. It's they're, not they're, anything. Dan Slott is doing the most roundabout way to bring back Superior Spider Man. Yeah, he's I, like, I, oh I well, hold on, you can't be Superior Spider Man. You didn't have a death, and I'm like, well, it's Anne Marie. That's who's, you just called it for me, Peter. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which, by the way, like, I mean, you know, Slot can play the long game because Slot's not leaving. You know, Slot yeah. is here, and if you tempt him with a Spider-Man book, he's going to take it. So Slot knows, unlike someone else, and I, I'm not going to even throw anybody under the bus, but like anyone else in the Marvel bullpen who isn't Jed McKay doesn't know whether they're going to get five issues or 12 issues. Yeah. So, d- except for Dan Slot, who's like, oh, you give me a Spider-Man book, I'll get 50 issues out of this. Oh yeah. If I want them, it's mine to re- to reject or accept. So with with Dan, it's like, oh man, yeah. Like I can, I if it was anyone else, and they were given the task of reigniting Superior Spider Man, they'd have to do it in three to five issues. With Dan Slott, it's like I got three volumes out of that. Yeah, it's just how it but, is. What I was saying there, because going back to our Nova discussion, I was saying there are some legacy characters that work. In my opinion. I actually thought Wolverine worked as a legacy character. Totally. Because, because, and I, I think it works because Wolverine is established. He is Logan. Right. He is Logan and Wolverine is a code name. And I know the, the general populace thinks Wolverine, but if anybody to take the code name, the woman that he has decided is his official daughter because she was his clone and then they retconned it so that she's actually his daughter and that's a whole kind of mess, but she is his daughter. <laughs> Like right? it made sense. She's you know? literally him. Yeah. I, I yeah. think that's fine. I, uh, I, I never also had a problem think with that, that either. It, it, yeah. What's that? You never had a problem with X I never had a problem with Laura taking over as Wolverine. I think that was great. But again, just Savage Wolverine and Wolverine. You yeah. Two books. 
it, it, they, they've they, they had to make it even more confusing with the fall of X. Now they're like, now we have Talon, old uh, X twenty three. We well, had young X twenty three. She's gone. So. <laughs> she's gone. There's no, no but I was just saying, like they they had to make it even they more. Had three money. other, yeah, no, it's true. I mean, like once you, <laughs> Wolverine is not Batman. You don't make a Wolverine family. It's just like because. Yeah, I think who, the best attempt at that was actually Lives and Deaths of Wolverine, where there was yeah. the family doing things and, and Wolverine Wolverine's traveling things. through time. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> That's true, actually. That was that was a good move. Although I will say one book was better than the other when, when it came to that. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mm. Wait, wait, hold on. Which one did you? I liked the family book. The, the time uh, traveler one. Was you like the time travel? Yeah. I just, I didn't like it about the time travel was it didn't feel like it had any true resolution. Anytime he'd get near it, it's like, and you're out. Yeah, because <laughs> it's a series. He's it, it, The idea was we're visiting different points in time. <laughs> I don't know. We could disagree. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, Wolverine was one of the ones I think worked as a legacy title. Definitely. definitely. I don't think, I don't think th they made, th he, uh, what's it? Jason Aaron made Thor work because the yeah. mystery was interesting. The mystery was interesting. And then the execution was interesting right. and it worked. And you know, the thing is, but I, I don't think it worked as a true legacy title though, because it was just a two year run of this story and this mystery. Yeah. And when it resolved, okay, now we're back to Thor. Like, well, they didn't, they didn't, they mishandled it. That's the problem. You, you know, Thor is not a legacy character. Jason Aaron attempted to invent one and it would have worked if Marvel could have stuck to it because yeah. the trick is you don't switch her out. You don't replace her name. You don't change all that stuff. Aaron sets her up. There is the mystery. There's the fun of it. There's, there's the like in universe adventures that are also have the undercurrent of wh who is she slash when will Odinson return. But then once you're done with that, he kept going with two Thors and that's yeah. cool but also when he's done, once Aaron leaves, you need to make sure that she can go on without Aaron. And they didn't have the gumption, the stick to or whatever the, the, the problem was to go, there's still two Thors and now we're going to make two Thor books. It, yeah. it just didn't work out. I, I think, you know, it's funny. Remember, remember Jace Fox being the next Batman yeah. and how that didn't work. And when I say didn't work, I don't mean about tone, story, character. I mean about sales. I mean about how it yeah. lasted, how Jace has not been invited to any Batman group shot photo you know what's session. The weird part about that is there's like three volumes of that. I know it's it ran. They they dedicated. They, they, I, I could they name, tried. Right. Outside of Doom Patrol, I couldn't name three volumes of a Nick Darrington run. And yet Nick Darrington was saddled with that book. Where is he on a bat book that isn't a book that like half the population's reading that yeah. said when it, when it comes to like that, I was like, I, you know, again, you're, you're inventing a character. They were, they were very uh, big on the writer of that series. And they were like, he's, he's our new hotness. He's going to do this thing. Do let him, let him cook. And he did. And they let him cook for like three volumes, that series. And, uh, but it didn't last. And part of the reason why it didn't last was one, it didn't get folded into the, the larger world Two, It wasn't new. And it, and three batman isn't a legacy character like no. batman is bruce wayne period that said the closest you'll ever the get closest to legacy you'll get <laughs> okay, is right, dick grayson okay thank you right because if you did a bat if you did and again it's like i know i sound like a broken record but like this is the formula you want two batman books bruce wayne and dick grayson two batman books didn't they do that song. though batman i don't think inc so no batman inc and batman the what? Right before New Fifty Two, was that true? Was that was that yeah. how that worked? Dick Grayson stayed in Gotham. With he Damian. was still in Gotham. Yes, and but listen, that did work. Yeah, we all liked it, <laughs> and people bought it. The only difference was, and I I wouldn't call it Batman Inc. I'd go Batman, and I'd go Batman the Dark Knight or something like that. You know, like yeah. the book would be called a, a something that differentiated enough, but not so enough that we're because the next Batman is a little presumptuous. I don't like that as a title. I think it's like. It's a little bit on the nose. Well, the biggest issue with it... Jace in general was like, and I think this is part of the problem. He, like you said, he didn't get folded in, but he also didn't get folded in because they were like, well, he's the next Batman, but he has nothing to do with Batman, the Bat family. Yeah. Barely tied in because of Lucius Fox. Right. Like, and it's like, that's, that's, that's a tough sell when you're like, oh no, he's connected to the Bat family. He's Lucius Fox's son. Uh, was it a disowned son? Right. Who has come invented. back. Who yeah. was a different, who, no, we didn't invent. He existed, but I'm reinventing him by giving him a new name. That way I right. can check when there's, he's called Jace instead of Tim. Yeah. And, the, and, and then like, oh, why did he become Batman? Well, he wanted to be a vigilante and found a bat suit. What? <laughs> what? You didn't know yeah. that's how they, how it got figured out? Yeah. And they didn't like, they didn't sell it well. Like they just, no. they were, they were like, ladies and gentlemen, you're welcome. 
And it was like, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I mean, like he did look dope. Yeah. But and and there were some sequences that I read that were that went hard, and I'm like, that's cool. But like, why do I care? Like, yeah. how do I get invested? And you know, when it comes to legacy characters, the reason why I'm invested, by and large, is because I care about the character that came before. Well, which brings us to the topic that brought us over. I was saying one of the legacy characters that I think works is Richard Ryder to Sam Alexander. Yes. Especially yes. when Richard Ryder sacrificed himself. So he went down heroically. Yeah. So the and helmet then, has to go somewhere. Right. But I don't think that was it. It wasn't Rich's helmet. It was a different. No, he, he found a different helmet. But yeah, it's the same but like, concept. You well, know? but Rich died and was replaced by Sam. But even wasn't even replaced. It was just like there's another Nova because there were always more Novas. Um, with Rich's situation. It was kind of like the Green Lantern situation. We're like, oh, this guy died in a new one. Oh, but that guy came back. So now we have more. Or just the Guardians <laughs> are mad at this one. So here's another one. Because like, <laughs> yeah. that's how lanterns work. The Guardians got fickle and somebody like gave uh, Gant the finger. So that's the end of that. <laughs> now there's seven of them. Yeah, now there's oh. Guy Gardner. Now there's Simon Baz. Hey, super, where is Simon super tangent. Baz? Uh, super tangent. Yeah, I know you, you haven't read Green Lantern past six where I made you read it. That's right. No, I read okay. issue seven. I read not the most recent one, but I read. They have finally given a reason. Jeremy Adams gave a reason why there are so many Earth Green Lanterns. Oh, cool. And it's because there's like a central battery on Earth secretly. Okay. And that there are so many Green Lanterns on Earth because the Guardians knew that they would need to protect it. And that's why they made so many. Fine. There. I'll take that. I mean, like. And, that, and that's how Hal gets an official ring back. And now he's. Oh, he's got yeah. a ring back. All right, cool. I love it. He, I mean, like, he, could, he couldn't leave the planet, and he's trying to chase. They kidnap Razor, so he's trying to yes. chase them. Can't yeah. leave the planet, and then he discovers no. There's actually a thing here. Your ring is not a real ring. The thing was giving you a fake ring, but what? Here's a ring. Now you got a ring. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's cool. That's fine. Yeah. I like that. That, that, that. That's. I don't think honestly the reason why like it was like with Doomsday Clock where they're like, why are there so many American superheroes? I'm like, well, because they were invented in America and Americans were writing them and Americans were publishing them. That's yep. the real reason. Why are there so many earthbound Green Lanterns? Because most people don't want to read about the fish one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I will read a book about Chip, though. The right. Chip, book. Oh, Chip is a, you know, Chip is an exclusion. All right. I we, mean, we DC, if you, if you let me, me and Sal will write a story about Kilowog and Chip. Dude. On Buddy Cop Adventures. Kilowog and Chip together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be the, you'd have the big gruff Kilowog and then Chip yeah. on an adventure. And then you gotta make Chip like the assassin though. He like, he's the one who's trying to kill people. Yeah. Like, like you gotta, you gotta make, play up the Buddy Cop angle. Yeah, I'm trying to think <laughs> of like a fun, a fun like underscore like soup to nuts or something like that. But uh, <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, uh, we'll workshop it. But Kilowog yeah. is a fun character to write for anyway. And yeah. Chip is a character that is woefully underutilized and uh, has not been given his due. I mean, listen, uh, I I am a very I am a I I hate Nort, the dog Green Lantern, but even he got his due in the oh God Human Target series, which I would argue is one of the most like is is a perfect comic book series. But uh, but Chip, where's his where's his treatment? Where's where's yeah. his Renaissance? It's coming one day, one anyway. day. Chip, what about Dexstar? Dex I do love Dexstar. That's the cat Red Lantern. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, out of the Red Lanterns, the only ones that anyone remembers is Bleeze, Atrocitus, and Dexstar. Well, yeah, those are the three that are made. Like, the, <laughs> the other ones are just, who cares? Yeah. Oh, and well, Supergirl. <laughs> it's, okay, she, I still want them to go back to that. That's a that cool a idea. a great idea. That's a moment you can you can get away with in a Supergirl story arc, where, like, she yeah. gets a Red Lantern ring and burns it out to do something really cool, and then the next chapter, it's gone. Like, so I don't want to see I, her as a member anymore, but I do want to see her become a red lantern See, that's one, one thing i loved when jeff johns was, was coming up with stuff in dc yeah because he would do things like that he'd be like okay guys so we have like lantern cords that are attracted to emotions with crazy powers yeah and nobody gets them but hal jordan and crew like right yeah, how about it make scarecrow sense for... becomes a yellow lantern yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why why has a yellow lantern never oh you know what now he has. Now, now yeah. he's got one. Here we go. Problem solved. Totally. No. It's Why like, has Batman never gotten a ring? Oh, because he gets the white ring. Like right. <laughs> that's that that's that's Bendis. That's like a whole made up nonsense thing. It has nothing to do with Jeff. <laughs> oh no, but I'm saying Jeff Johns made the idea like everyone else can get other rings, guys. Oh, like, totally. They're not, they're not limited to aliens. <laughs> well, we've seen. I mean, you know, yeah, it's fun to see any of our DC pantheon get rings, especially which ones are worthy of which rings, and then having it lock perfectly in with their personalities. Yeah. But like it just so happens we've seen a Black Lantern Batman, a Green Lantern Batman, a Yellow Lantern <laughs> Batman, and a White Lantern Batman. 
Uh, because Batman also sells books, you see. So I'm yeah, and you guys. give him a lantern ring, and like whenever you get Batman powers, it's a great Elseworlds. It's kind just of thing. fun to see. It's just fun yeah. to see, and it's fun to co- it, it, and it's cool to make an action figure. Yeah. So okay, wow, we're way off topic. Hope you guys enjoy this. I, I... <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's one. Uh, all right. Well, moving on. Uh, until now, it's been speculation, but Marvel has confirmed Avengers Five has removed Kang Dynasty from its official title. Yep. Okay. So. Going back to what we said with our chat the other day, where they were talking about how Kang is still good. Like one guy came by with a random guy. Like, this is what we were talking about. Well, he had a random guy come into the chat, and he had a random tweet from a random guy going, just trust me, bro. This is Kang is still around. Yeah. Uh, no, they they officially removed Kang Dynasty. Like, Yeah, they, they dropped the title. Like, if they're, drop, if they're changing Avengers 5 from Avengers Kang Dynasty back to Avengers 5 or Untitled Avengers movie, yeah. then Kang ain't in it. He's either he's not in it or it's going to be like when they did, uh, I think it was Crossbones. Intro fight, Kang. Oh my God. Yes. No, Kang is going to be like, (laughs) there's going to be a moment of Kang from the back. And he's going to be like, and then Doom will kill him. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's what it'll be you know what i mean and then so maybe like, king's oh. still in it but he gets eradicated by doom immediately right or somebody goes like hey whatever happened with that guy who could go through time or something or did he ever actually do that because in the marvel universe the only thing that kang actually did that any member of the marvel universe outside of loki would remember is go to the quantum realm so as far as ant-man's concerned kang's power is shrinking yeah so like so, yeah, they're just like, whatever happened to that guy? And they're like, oh, I don't know. Some dudes in business suits outside of time said that don't said that, said not to worry about it anymore. That's <laughs> literally in the end of Loki. They just go, oh, and uh, we're, we're keeping an eye on Kang and his variants, but I think we're fine. Yeah. And I'm like, I think we're all better for it. So that's, yeah, that, that one. Uh, DC announces a live action Teen Titans movie, the same writer for the upcoming Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow film. Little else is known about the project presently. Uh, it makes total sense. Can people, you believe they made that announcement so quietly on like Blue Sky or whatever and nobody yeah. noticed? That one I can't believe because that was pretty crazy that that was even announced. Yeah. Um, one, for those who still want to fight to this day, Teen Titans Go is like one of the greatest selling like watch. It's, it's, it's too huge. successful, folks. Teen Titans Go did well. It did better than the Teen Titans show yeah. it was based off it's, of. Sorry. I mean, all of us adults want Teen Titans. That's what yeah. we want. But we're not getting it because Teen Titans Go does way better numbers for them. And it's probably cheaper to make. It's just easier. I'm sorry. It's just yeah. and listen, I hate it too. Teen Titans Go? Yeah, I'm not a fan. It's yeah. got its moments, but yeah, it's generally got the I'm... movie. The movie is the moments it has. Like yeah, and it's, the it's, it's, episode. There's a yeah, there's a few episodes in here and there where they go like into the past. And it's got its moments, but generally yeah. it's one of those shows that has so many episodes. I'll never watch it looking for those moments. Hell no. I'll just yeah. go watch a clip of the fun shit. And that's the And end of that. the fact is, like, there are so many moments, there's so many episodes. You can't say it is the worst show ever made because there's so many that technically a couple could be good. <laughs> like it's uh, just how many you gotta be curious. How many episodes how many episodes of this are there? That's a great question. Oh god, holy shit. There are eight seasons, 52 episodes a season. Oh my god. <laughs> over 400 episodes of the teen titans go show yeah. that's insane but everyone wants to tell you how terrible it is and it makes no sense that it exists yeah i mean listen there I'm are sure 416 it is. documented episodes of teen titans go not including the movie they are yeah. 15 minutes each i will give you that right. but even if you cut these in half that's 200 episodes of teen titans go yeah, yeah. <laughs> holy crap yeah, the uh, the writer of this, I believe, is Anna Noguera, who's also doing Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow. I'm not sure. I, I just know that she uh, she's essentially from TV, and uh, so here it is. Uh, but doing... James Gunn is picking these people, so I've got faith, and he's going to be also overwatching it. So I don't think it's going to be ass. I I don't know. I don't I I don't know this creator, so I'm not familiar. But I I mean, like, here's the thing: Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow was one of the best comic books made in the last decade, and that it better be great and if it is teen titans is gonna have no problem if supergirl sucks we're gonna see teen titans switch creative forces oh, straight up because supergirl's pretty much already written but it's, it's, a 12, it's, it's a 12 issue comic you already yep. have it you just gotta convert it and you're good you know yeah convert it they got the star and yeah. 
you know, there's a rotating cast. It's literally there's two lead there's there's two leads and a villain, and the rest is all character actors. You're done. Yeah. And it's all gonna be shot on a green screen because every single scene takes place in an alien bar. So it's like there's there's no place that looks like Timbuktu. You're yeah. not just gonna be able to go on location and shoot something. So you're you're just gonna that it can be done oh we can, it could be shot and we don't even know. <laughs> it was but, done uh, over a weekend. They just I, flew everyone in. But like, what's what we can extrapolate? Here's the thing: we can we can we can pad the runtime with. I mean, here's what we can talk about right now: is that like the fact is, Teen Titans the movie, right? What does that mean in conjunction with Batman: Brave and the Bold, starring Batman and Damian? We now know that in the new DC universe, Batman has had at least two Robins, one of whom is Dick Grayson, and is now either going to be Teen Titan Robin or Nightwing, more likely. So it means there's a legacy for Batman, and we're going to see Nightwing on screen. That's a guarantee. I'm I'm excited for that, because it does seem like James Gunn is like, all right, how many solo Batman films where he's learning his the ropes do we have? Do we need zero? Good. <laughs> you know, like, literally. Like, I almost, be- look, I get, I love the Batman. I did, but I almost don't I want love the, Batman. the Batman, too. I, I almost just want Batman and Robin, and we just go in that direction. I agree with you, but also having recently seen some clips of, ba- of the Batman, I just kind of want the Batman to be the continuity Batman. But I, I know we're not gonna do that. But they're not going. Yeah, they're not gonna. If they're not, and if they're not gonna do that, we can also add some up to the second details that say that Jake Gyllenhaal really wants to be Batman in the Brave and the Bold. How do you feel about Jake Gyllenhaal's Batman in this new universe if they were to go with him? Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah, he was apparently in that's, the running that's Mysterio, originally. Right? Mysterio, right? Like, Mysterio. Yeah. Okay, I was making sure I have the right actor in my head. Yes, yes. He. he I would looked... not be against Jake Me Gyllenhaal too. as he's got the physique when he wants it. I mean, we just saw him in Roadhouse, ba- a terrible movie. But he exactly, got the I didn't see Roadhouse. It. I heard it was. I heard Roadhouse was good. It was, it's you, good. I heard it was terrible. Maybe we should oh, watch it and talk about it. <laughs> yeah, our Roadhouse roundup. But, Roadhouse. Uh, <laughs> Roadhouse. Whoosh. But yeah, I I, I like Jake Gyllenhaal. He has auditioned for both Batman and Spider-Man. He has tried to be in one of these franchises forever. I think he's a good actor and I love him as Mysterio. I think he'd be a, and especially because at this point, the age of we need our definitive generational Batman is over because we've done them all. We've even yeah. done a, t- a horrible Flash movie where our classic Batman came back. Like we don't need to worry about like the legacy anymore. We could just be like, oh, um, you, you're Batman for the next, for this universe. Okay. Yeah. You know, and and Jake Gyllenhaal, you could do worse than Jake Gyllenhaal. And especially if this is Look, like a 42 year old Jake Gyllenhaal is going to be a dad. Yeah. Ever since they made Ben Affleck work, I'm yeah. like, I believe you can make anyone work. Like, well, and, I, and you know, you know, I hate people that are like, no, no, I can't see it. The guy's scrawny. He can't act. I'm like, no, no. If he can act, we're good. We're freaking. Yeah, he can act. We're good. He can wear a suit that has bu- that has muscles. He could build the muscles himself. Like the the, the days. Look of- at Homelander. Look at Anthony a- Anthony Starr. Yeah. Yeah. When he's not in the Homelander suit. Right. That dude has no muscles. No. <laughs> and and nobody cares. Like no. least of all anybody like me. Like I could never care less. <laughs> I am I'm the kind of guy who's like, don't work out. Like just just put on a suit. You did know, you did you cares. hear how they messaged Jared Pet uh, not Jared, uh Jensen Eccles about that? No. He, oh, did uh, they he, tell him like, oh, he's those are real. And like, he's and no, it was somebody told him to go buff up. So he really put on like all the muscle of the pat and everything. Yeah. And when he showed up, they're like, why? You could have just put padding in the suit. <laughs> <Wow. Exactly. Aww. laughs> That's not fair. But good for him anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, I I uh I'm excited for this. The only the only thing that I was like, oh man, again, is you know, when they <laughs> launched their original DC cinematic universe, they were like, uh Ben Affleck is Batman. I'm like, oh cool, Batman's 45. <laughs> that's the first that's the first bat. It's, he's already <clears throat> tired and unhappy yeah yeah but this is a very different well, Zach Snyder, he went right to dark knight returns like we just, yeah, we we just start went, what? first movie <laughs> dark knight returns like, dude but we just one, it's like or, okay. did you know do you know he he lost a robin too we're not going to say which robin or how no, or no. when just that or he anything died. Yeah, yeah he just he, there's a dead one right like, <laughs> and what's funny is if they did follow the logic of what we're getting for the new dc universe all that stuff still happened like not that it happened in the same way, but like he will have already had a Robin. Maybe one also died and we can get Red Hood into the DC universe. I don't necessarily want that, but I teased it because I know you love him. Oh, that, no, and that'd also be, dude, Damien. That'd be awesome. Come right? on. Like, Come, a live action oh, under Red the Red Hood. Hood under James Gunn's vision. I mean, dude, like he, th- you're, you could do a Judas Contract-esque Teen Titans movie where the villain is Red Hood. Oh, what a twist. 
right? <laughs> like just that's the reveal of like, oh yeah, no, Batman had a partner and he died and everyone guessed it. Like that's, you know, and, and you could you could even make it so he's Red X in the Teen Titans movie and then he becomes Red Hood in the rest of the Batman ongoing. I mean, right, it's because movie, of Batman, yeah. but yeah, but Red, he's Red X in the Teen Titans because you know, he wants to mess with Dick. Yes. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't necessarily want all these things. I'm just saying these are the things that we think might happen. But uh, as far as the new DC universe is concerned, uh, you know, they're going to have to recast. They're going to have to cast Batman. They've cast literally like everybody, figuratively speaking, everybody else in the DC universe for the Superman movie, except yeah. for Batman, which I do appreciate because they're like, if we put Batman in our Superman movie, it will overshadow Superman. Oh, we need Superman up. to stand out, and he will against people. Like I mean, that's the or... problem with Man of Steel too, aka Batman versus Superman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, I mean, it's... Superman there too. Yes. So, uh, Teen Titans live action movie. My question is, uh, who will be the Titans? Probably just the Titans from everything. Like the Teen Titans go. Oh, Teen Titans will be the Titans. It'll be what I. I'm expecting most of the lineup for the TV show because that's the ones that everyone recognizes. Boom. Maybe one or two oddballs will be swapped out. <laughs> My Maybe Donna Troy will be swapped out with some random character because James Gunn's like. No, Donna Troy's that. definitely going to be in it because you James so? Gunn is a is a nerd for this stuff. Yeah, we're going to get okay. Donna Troy. It's going to be freaking weird. We're going to have a Flash, a Nightwing, a Starfire, a Cyborg, Donna, and Gar. You think we're getting? Will that they team? do Cyborg since Cyborg was a member of the Justice League previously? Like, will they reestablish Cyborg or will they go? Eh, that's kind of dicey. Let's just leave Cyborg out of it. I don't know. Right. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put the diversity hat on for a moment. Mm -hmm. only black guy in the entire cast yeah but you could always add <laughs> you could you could shunt him out i mean you could put static on that team you could make uh, oh my god could you imagine if they swapped out cyborg with static I'd and be very static okay is that. it a live action titans oh, come i mean on. because come that would on. also be that's your next spinoff like if you put static if you establish static in your titans movie and then you make a static movie like for yeah. you know for a for a modest budget that would be like really kind of fun and give it to you could steal Ryan Coogler from Marvel and make him make the static movie. I'm sure he'd love to make that. <laughs> Dude, because like from the way, I mean, even before the woke Hollywood movement, they, they always tried to have a, a diverse cast. When they you did. Have a, they, that was just a thing that they I mean, like. They were like, I watched oh, a lot sense. of horror movies, guys. There were no, they, they, do you guys remember that? Like everyone likes to act like this woke diverse thing is a new thing. Right. It's a joke. It's a literal joke in Scream. Mm. I, no, not Scream. The, the spoof, scary movie that the scary black movie. guy is token. Yes. Like he's always smoking. The black guy is always in the movie and he's yeah. always smoking weed. Like there was a diverse movement be way before people complained about it. Yeah. So that's no. why I, that's why I say if you're going to have six people on a team, there yeah. will be a black person on that team. And I, I mean, yeah. Take so out Cyborg and put it static, though. I'm on board with that. I would be very okay with static. I, I'm not a fan. Cyborg's okay, but he just watches computer screens all the time. He's like, he's literally the taxi service. Here's a boom tube, and I watched that computer screen. Put static on the team. Holy shit. I, dude, that would be amazing. Yeah. Now, I did say, apparently, uh, on one of those social medias, somebody asked him, do you have plans for static or any other milestone characters? And James Gunn said, yes. Now, that wasn't I, in the same sentence as as Titans. Just someone asked him, I want to say this was... I mean, a live-action static in general. I About like. a year ago. I mean, so just like, imagine a live-action static. I'm in. That, I that's, mean, you, could, you could immediately sell... I mean, like, doing a an icon movie would be hardcore. A hardware movie would be really awesome. Um, you could set up the Blood Syndicate. Like, there's... And and just set it in the DC universe. Yeah, just call one of the cities Dakota, and you're good. And you're good to go. Like, I mean, they, Milestone always worked with DC, which is why it's always kind of sad that they they've always been at odds because of the contractual stuff. You know, I think that's over. I th no, I think so too. I think it is done, but we have no definitive proof, so I don't want. Well, I don't want the, the definitive proof we have is James Gunn saying, "I'm interested." Yeah, like, and his his answers are of course on threads and always being like, "Yes, no." No, like, so yeah, I mean, like, that's he confirmed a Teen Titans movie and a milestone movie a year ago. So I'm in. Okay. All right. Next, we're going to move these last two a little bit quicker Ooh, because just really what? quick Blue Beetle would be a Titan because you had him cast and ha you have a suit. Right. But it seems like James Gunn is going to officially kind of be like, no, we're having a fresh start kind of they a thing. Did, they said he was in it. They said we're keeping characters and stuff. Like, I think they said he we're keeping him. That movie might not be in canon, but he is. Oh, like they're doing a Peacemaker? We're going to Peacemaker him. Yeah. Okay, I, dude, saves, I, I, I would still be on board with that. Yeah, I'd still yeah. be on board with that. So, yeah. Anyway, um, 
Uh, we briefly talked about this yesterday, but I'll bring it up again. Sony is going to be putting out all eight Spider-Man movies in the theaters to celebrate 100 years or whatever, or like 50 years. Some uh, celebration of Sony. Sony lost a bunch of money on Madam Web, and so they're re-releasing all their Spider-Man movies in theaters. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what they're doing. Good call. Uh, will you see any of them in the theater? I, You know what? When we heard this news yesterday, I was debating it. I don't think I will. I'm but not- I'm also... I. I've also gotten to a point with the movie theaters and we've complained about those up and down since COVID I've built such a great setup over here. Yeah. That honestly I've gotten to the point where I like, they're like new in theaters. I'll just pay the 20 bucks here and watch it in my underwear. Well, (laughs) and with Spider-Man, you have to pay anything. You probably own half of those movies. Well, and that's just it. Like, so when I go to the theater, it's a big deal. Like yes. we're going out to dinner, we're doing this whole thing. Right. We're gonna. You I'm know. seeing Ghostbusters in the theater. Yeah, I'll see Afterlife in the theater. I'll see uh, Kong versus the Kong versus Godzilla. Godzilla again. No, yeah, I want to see it. No, the new one. It comes out at the end of the. Yeah, month, no, I'm just saying, like the sequel that is the same yeah. movie. Yeah, that right. one I want to see because it, it'll be better than my sound system. Yes, but all the Spider Mans again. I- I kind like, the Wait, thing okay. is, I, you're a bigger Spider Man fan. We're both Spider Man fans, but you are definitely I, bigger I'm than a big me. Spider Man fan. Yeah. Which ones are you willing to go back to the theater? For? Right. I would definitely go see the first two. Okay. You know, Tobey Maguire makes sense. ones. The Tobey Maguire ones. Like I, okay. I, I, I saw them in theaters. Yeah. Multiple times. <laughs> you know, I, I, I remember I, I had those experiences. So that's more of a nostalgia trip for you, though. To go it would, see it would have to be. It would. It's yeah. not like it's not like when they re release Indiana Jones, and I'm like. I never got to see this in theaters. Yeah. Like I got to go, you know, yeah. I got, like those fathom events where I'm like, I got to see, I got to see Frank Oz's little shop of horrors in theaters because it came out in 1986 and I was not going to the movies. <laughs> uh, I do a lot of the fathom events. Uh, when they just re released final fantasy seven advent children, I went to go. See oh it. my God. I saw that in theaters. And let me tell you something. It was the most boring experience I've ever had in my life. Okay, and I saw one fine day. <laughs> okay. But the fight sequences were awesome. I don't even remember. Uh, I remember being just just bored out of my skull. But I also watch a lot of those Ghibli movies when they re-release them. Like, yep. I, try, I, mean, I, I haven't seen them all in the theater. I keep trying to, but they no. do that. That's a pretty I always forget. Movie. Yeah. Like, I saw like, Kiki. That was the last I, one I saw. I'll, I'll, go see, I'll go to the theater, and they're like, Studio Ghibli movie, Fathom Event. Come on, yes. down on. And I'll be like, we're booking tickets. And then, I, like, the day rolls around, and I get the ping on my phone. Are we still free tonight? <laughs> <laughs> and that is me and Tiffany all the time, where I'm like, hey, uh, are we still seeing... Uh, Whatever the hell, and she's like, if yeah, you I, want to, I pre, yeah, that's what Natalie always says, and I'm like, yeah. I'm in my sweats, and we gotta leave in 30 minutes, like, yeah, nah, I'm okay. <laughs> no, I mean, if you're in your sweats and you're going to the movies, I mean, that's basically what the experience is like going to the movies at this point, isn't it? I mean, you know, just, <laughs> I'm in my underwear and I'm gonna eat loudly and be a jerk, so you know, it's like, what was it? There was a, this isn't in the topics, but it could be easily where AMC was like you know, why aren't people going to the movies? And I'm like, I don't know, maybe because like it's expensive and it's a social experiment. Like it sucks. Well, it's like going to the airport. Like, right. It's like going the, to the, mo- airport. <laughs> the moment you walk through the TSA at the airport, everyone forgets how to exist. Oh my I God. see people in pajamas. They're walking around in their socks. They're eating like nachos, like one handed while they're one handed while they're, one-handed while they're in the bathroom. Mad. They're mad at you for walking in front of them. Like yeah. what is happening? What? What yeah. happened to everyone? And right. I feel like that, that's how it is. Like, as soon as you give that ticket to the ticket counter guy at the movie theater and you walk through there, everyone's like, I'm in my bed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm watching a movie and I associate watching a movie by putting a screen on my eyes while I'm like lying horizontally in my bed. <laughs> so it's like, I want to replicate that experience. I can't literally, I literally can't be entertained anymore unless I am horizontal. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's a horrible experience, but I mean, I fly I a lot. I got stuck at the airport leaving Ooh. Emerald City, and I'm just, so I'm walking through gates and stuff, just keeping, yeah. and I'm like, people, what is going on? Oh, I know. This woman's over here. She's got her hoodie off. She's got her, uh, basically, her pants are practically off. She's just crouched in the corner with like two things plugged into the wall, just like, ah. Like, what, oh, are, I, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Those, those, those plugs are not for you. Those plugs were put there for the custodial staff to plug machines yeah. into and yet people are like that's mine i do think it is horrible when people get those plug stickers and they put them at the airport or they put them <laughs> on a wall and i'm like yeah that's that's mean uh but anyway will i risk the horrible theater experience to go see a movie i've literally seen three times in the theater already or any number of a- any of the eight of them probably not but it would be kind of neat to power how ha- to power through the the tom holland ones like to watch Homecoming, Far From Home, and No Way Home, like all yeah. like 
all in one sitting or in all one in sitting? Two, I think well because if or it's in two one days. Sitting, if it's one sitting, because we don't know for certain, and I'm going to double check this to make sure the news didn't update. Uh, yeah, but yeah. we didn't know if they were all coming out at once or if they were right or if they're like staging them, where it's like, no, this week it's Spider Man one, next week it's Spider Man two. Every week, it's every, every week. week. All right, yeah, I so can easily for, do that. But but for me, that's not really an event to go it worth going to the theater. Like if I they were like, we're going to do the trilogy for Tom Holland in one sitting. I'd be like, I'd be kind of down. Like, That's like watching all the Lord of the Rings. It's like, all right, yeah, yeah I could, I could do that. that yeah, now now cool. it's, now it's an event. I'm doing now something it's an special. Event. You get some people involved. You bring some, yeah. people, smuggle some move, some food into the movie theater. Yeah, you all you hate it by the ending, and you're like, why did we do this? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because I'm like, <laughs> why didn't we leave after two? I don't understand because that was my experience. I saw Spider Man one what four times in the theater. Spider Man two five times in the theater, and Spider Man three one time in my life. Oh yeah, I same here. <laughs> Like, all right, let's go ugh. to the last topic. Uh, yeah. Oh, I didn't know about this. Oh, <laughs> Valiant, yeah. in their continued attempt to be a terrible company, uh, <laughs> is now posting and deleting a job listing at Valiant titled Generative AI Video Artist. Yeah. Now, it's not yeah, overly surprising this. that Valiant is jumping on another controversial bandwagon since they did the same thing with NFTs. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's even in the best case circumstances, it's not a good look. That said, it was not advertised. The NFT thing, like Valiant, Valiant or whatever company DMG or whatever like owned Valiant at the time, made like a Twitter account, Valiant NFT, and was like, "Hey, NFTs, the worst thing right? about the the worst thing about the Valiant NFT, and you yeah. know this as well, and all of our contexts are out, and the company's completely done now. <laughs> yeah, so I, I'm just gonna say F it and blast everything. Mm -hmm. Uh. For those who don't know, they were like, Benny, are you, what are you going to, you guys used to like Valiant. Why aren't you covering the Valiant NFT situation? It's because Valiant had nothing to do with that. Yes. Ever since the people that we knew that ran Valiant left, there is a corporate overlord for Valiant and they don't know what the f they're doing. Yes. And they tried to relaunch the comic company as a comic company and they did never told the comic company what they were doing and they never told them about the NFTs. So when the NFTs came out, Valiant got backlash for an NFT they weren't doing yeah. but the corporate overlord was doing trying to make a quick buck. Yeah. Now that said, the current situation of Valiant is uh, uh, quite a bit different than the NFT period. Because is it, is it, I don't know what the current is at all. Well, because what? they made a deal with uh, with Alien Books, and so like it's not it's not quite the same situation. It's not quite the same uh, people, but it's a bad look. It's a bad look overall. Now they did pull the job posting. My question is, what are you making generative AI videos for? Yeah, like I do know definitively. I could say this, I think, confidently. I, I got a, a, at least an official word from Valiant that said they are not making AI generated comic books. That is that is not on their agenda. That will be the worst look ever. Just look at the backlash to the possible possibility of the of Batman one look. artist maybe making like two pages AI, which by yeah. the way is is not confirmed. It's not confirmed still, and it's looking like if you go to his Twitter, I mean his Instagram, he actually painted this. Yeah, that's why I always say when people are like, "Oh my God, this random guy on Twitter said that these look the same, and this is low resolution." I'm like, "Who the f is the random guy on Twitter?" Yeah, uh, he's a concerned citizen. <laughs> no, uh, Alien Books that, has just license. reminded me of when people came out with Power World. And they're like, okay, so I put a Pokemon and a Pal into a blender, and, they, and look, it's, they, they sold the wire framing. Yeah. <laughs> like, thank you, random. Thank you, guy with anime photo named uh, uh, Neko Sun Twenty Nine. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, no. Uh, Alien Books has a license for Valiant comic releases. They are actually launching a brand new Bloodshot book. Uh, actually this wednesday uh so you know it's a bad look for them um but again this is also not a thing that they even advertise now it's not a good look because they didn't advertise it but comic tropes was just like i just saw this what the hell sometimes i wonder like who at comic tropes well at comic tropes i guess it's just one guy <laughs> yeah i was thinking i was thinking of another one but who's just there's like, let me look up the job listings for Valiant. Let's right. just see what they're doing. It, it, <laughs> well, in the screen grab, it said ad. So it could have been that he was just trolling like LinkedIn or something. And there was an ad posted for Valiant. And he <laughs> it just happened to hove into his field of view and was okay. like, what? Because like, if it's comic tropes, he's a good guy. I mean, yeah, I'm right. Exactly. Yeah. No, yeah. But uh, no, it wasn't like he was. I thought it was like comic book resource. I'm like, do they have a guy on staff to just look at job listings? <laughs> yeah, no, they do have. Well, I doubt that they, that that comic book resources would be doing a lot of research on comic books at this point. But uh, 
comic tropes i i also don't i don't think he's trolling the message boards looking for like hot tips he was just kind of like he's probably just stro- scrolling on social media and it popped up and he's like what yeah. the hell uh but it you know i don't know the situation i i my question would be why are you looking for generative ai videos at all oh no that and i agree with. I, that's, that's that's the a video editor or a content creator to make your videos for you well, they gotta like, do it you, should, you know they got you know. Yeah, but uh, but that would be my question. The other, but but I do see how like it's 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 for video. It has nothing to do with comics. It's two completely different things. And Alien Books is not Valiant. They're just licensing the license, so it's it's a different yeah. situation. But it is it, it's a it, no matter what, it's a crappy look. No, it one hundred percent is. It, it's just it continues to see continues to be the overlords over at Valiant are like we don't have any idea what the hell we're doing, but we know we should be making comics. Valiant needs some significant rebranding and PR yeah. to save face. And I don't think they're going to be able to engender themselves to the audience they've lost unless they divest themselves from DMG. Yeah. That's, That's- at the end of the day, that is, and, and which is something that they are incapable of doing because they're owned by that company. Like the company yeah. itself is like the characters being licensed to another book publisher to make those comics happen. It's just, it's just never going to happen unless yeah. DMG sells off the characters. So, but all right, that is today's episode of Absolute Comics. Uh, why do we always do this, man? We started late. And we're like, it'll be like 20 minutes. We'll put to the topics. It's been a 50 minute podcast. We did we're, it. That's a real, that's a show. That's a, that's a regular show. Oh no, it is a regular show. We went every tangent you can, you can imagine for today's yeah. episode. It's great. Uh, thank you guys for, it'll, it'll, yeah. thank you for joining us today. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. We put out a lot of videos over here talking about all kinds of topics and weekly you get an Absolute Comics episode and on if Dan ever figures out the schedule, we get Comics Experiment over here as well. Uh, <laughs> and if you want to see more dramatically read comic books or poor opinions on comic book situations, check out my channel, Comic Storian. And if you want to see some awesome buddies chatting about what's weird in comics, check out Comic Pop for back issues. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time right here.